the lathe gets started and tells the tape machine when to start. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's a pretty basic, very simple way that it does it because because this thing is moving and so forth when we when we engage it. Now we have to engage this into what we call the lead screw. But when we engage this and put the lathe on lead in, the way it can tell when it's at the right spot is something that we determined. We, we, we've uh, actually added this to the lathe back here. We've added these little uh, photo cells, and there's these little uh, sent these little pieces. Actually, little uh, wire pieces of metal that go through the photo cell, and when it hits the photo cell, it then sends a signal to the computer that says, "Drop the head." And then the head drops. It goes into lead-in. The head, then, the, head the, the the recording head. Yeah, the yeah the cutter. Then it, it drops, drops automatically. It drops automatically. The, the head goes in, and then that's de determined by uh, the computer, the lead-in, the coarseness of it, and so forth. And then when it gets to the diameter that you want signal, the the computer tells the tape. And machine. that's all. Preset the it's diameter preset. where you want yeah, the signal. Yeah, so preset. you don't really do anything. This no, I don't is have, a big scam. Yeah, you, you, you just <laughs> that hang part, out here. That part we don't have to worry about. <laughs> that part we just have to make sure that we get it set originally. And right. We still have to have it. You have to have somebody there to determine that it's correct. Right. That, so, so we have. So we have this really high tech uh, ruler here. Uh -huh. That we can measure the lockout diameter, the starting diameter, the diameter where the the head drops and starts cutting. That, so this is a very handy and it's very reliable. Yes, we've it's had very, that for years. It's very <laughs> obvious. And you and you can cut a, 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 a ten inch record and a seven inch record we can here. Cut, yeah, you just change. You it, just change. That's right. The parameters. Yeah, they're, they're all. It's already right. preset. It's all preset. Because okay. because nowadays we have seven inch, ten inch, twelve inch. Right. Uh, sometimes it's just a promo tool. Right. But uh, you know, we've even done some very strange discs where we made a ten inch look like a seven inch. You know, everything looked like a seven inch except expand bigger so yeah. we the way we cut it the way we the diameters and so forth and even the label was big with a photograph of that center thing that you oh. put in that <laughs> it was kind of an interesting looking record now someone also wanted to know when you use the anti-static gun the yeah. milty when do yeah. you when do you use that in this process you, do yeah. you destat the the yeah. lacquer the lacquer yeah. yeah actually it actually helps we've actually discovered that it actually helps it's a it's a little bit quieter because there's a tendency for there to be some static electricity uh uh, with with lacquer, right? Um, even with the cutting in interaction with the cutting with the with the uh, cutting tool and so forth. So uh, just to make sure we have none of that going on, and and it also could interfere with pulling away that piece of lacquer that's cut out of the disc. Right. That can be a problem with static. And that goes so, in there. And that goes in there, right? But that goes into like a bunch of hair. Have you ever had one of those ex explode yes, on you? Yes. Yeah. You have. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Is it bad? Yeah, it's bad. Wow. Yeah, if you have a lot of chip in there, yeah. if you have a lot of chip in there, it can blow the all these tubes off, and and, and you get black smoke all over the room. And it oh. Goes, it happened at A and M with me, and it went oh. all down the hallways, and it was. I like, think I got one of those records. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 so th so how often do you have to ch change that? Well, you know, when it starts, you know, about half full, we. It's getting there. Try to get it. Yeah, it's there's getting, a lot of Vanessa in there. It's yeah, it's uh, a lot of stuff in there. Uh, so so, but we do that. We do that de-staticking just before we cut. Yeah, you know, just before. Okay, I think those are those are the questions so far. So we're so we're doing good. Oh yeah, no, it's, okay. things are happening. We're we're making progress. Yes, I don't you know. Think I mean, there's just a lot of stuff. Here it is. This is the inner. This is like this is like Yoda's room. Here they're mod they're modifying a convection broil oven to play records. I think that's for baking tapes. The, the, the platter only spins at so far at sixteen and two thirds. They've got to fix that. They ha don't have any records that'll you play need in there. You take a look at Benno's little computer stairs or something with the little tube. It's nice. Noise. And would you remember Lyle Lemon? No. no. <laughs> okay, here's a lot of screwdrivers. 
It's all snake oil. See that? This, all this audio stuff is snake oil. Everything. Everything is snake oil. Well, what are you building here? Um, what are these little designing the new the front end for the tube electronics. The little chocolates on for the, the cutting room. Yeah. Yeah. These, these little chocolate yeah, things. Taguchi came up in this crazy carpenter came up. Yeah, these little chocolate bells. The are are they really chocolate? I don't know. Pick a bite. Okay, we won't talk about that. And then all the tape machines. Let's see, like what's in these cabinets? This cabinet. Um, Tape machines, I think. Look at all this stuff. It's just tape heaven. There's a project turntable. This is the SP10 Mark III right there. Yeah, there's an SP10 Mark III turntable. There's the drive. There's a Nakamichi MR1, a Yamaha. It's the graveyard of cassette decks. A to D converters. Stu another Stude A80. Look. Look at this. An MCI 24 track. Oh, just, just hanging out. Mr. Einstein? I know there's a lot of guys who see in this and they're just going, can I? Why is it? It's just boxes of transformers, cables. There, there is a Vishnu bar here. This is how uh, a place like this stays operating at all times when a session is called and something isn't working. There's somebody here to fix it. Make sure you get the EMTs. Oh, the plates? The side room, uh huh? Yeah. And where are those big Bozaks? Are they in there too? Uh, well, uh, Bernie's speakers were buried in those boxes. Oh, are those are the crates down there. Yeah. Yeah, those are those are Bernie's Bozaks so and. Do not stack. Yeah, there they are. Those are his old Bozaks. They've been there for how, twenty years or so. Twenty years. They've been there for a long time. They've been there a while, yeah. And he said, I said, so why don't you know? Why don't you just uh, sell them? You can sell them so easily these days on eBay or on AudioGon or something. And he goes, Oh yeah, but the cabinets were so nice. I said, Okay, you're not selling. You're not selling. The next thing you're going to tell me is that, oh, but the shipping crates are so nice. The shipping crates alone, I can't sell. I can't sell them because the shipping crates are so nice. And then in here we have the, the plates. Yeah, the one, on the, the one on the end is the stereo and then two monos next to it. Oh, yeah, here they are. Here are the plates, the EMT plates. And where are the EMT? Yeah, Bernie, Bernie just used it, uh, what, Monday or Tuesday? Oh. On a and do you ha have the matching cups and saucers? Or just the plates? Just the plates. Just the plates. Okay. There it is. EMT. Yep. There you go. And here's where they drill. This is... This is what you need. They know the drill. Okay. And they have Fren French presses. There you go. So I hope you enjoyed that tour. Look at this. This is, okay, this is the um, Magnatech. This is when, now this is important to show you because this is when uh, Classic Records did the um, 35 millimeter tape project for the Mercury's and people were claiming, oh, they didn't really use the 35 millimeter tapes. They just said that they used the quarter inch mix downs. No, they, I was here. They rebuilt this machine and they used it to transfer those mercuries. That's why they're so good. So there you go. And did Len Horowitz rebuild the heads for this? Uh, Len did the machine for the project, yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. And believe me, this stuff is not just peanuts, although these are peanuts. And that's it. That's your tour 
of Benno's workshop, here on the analog planet. <laughs>